Hi everyone. My name is Jerry Wise. I'm a life and relationship coach and I've been doing this work for about 40 years or so and this particular video is entitled self-care for going no contact. This is a third uh, video in a three series video uh, set that I've made and this is the last of this series. And I wanted to share my perspectives on going no contact with narcissistic families or narcissistic family members and that sort of thing um, from a family systems perspective. And that's why I wanted to share that. I've seen other videos and other folks who talk about going no contact. And I was trying to think of the, uh, healthy ways to go no contact, healthy ways to maintain the sense of self if you choose to go no contact. Uh, because in, in family systems thinking, it's very important how we do our self-differentiation work because we might blindly or unwittingly feed into the dysfunctional pattern and the family super self thinking we're doing something good, but actually we're just doing something that maintains the status quo or the dysfunctional system and maintains it within us in a negative way. And so that's why I like to use a family systems perspective so I have a better idea of to uh, how to be myself, how to choose to go no contact, what do I do with no contact, uh, is it just reactivity, which just feeds into the family dysfunction, or is it an intentional, mature, detached and neutral um, choice? And I think that makes a lot of difference uh, because while it may still be an improvement to go no contact with an abusive, toxic, malig malignant narcissist, uh, or, or cluster B type of person, it may be useful to do that. But if we do it out of reactivity and we don't do it to, to work on neutralizing uh, them within us, then we're going to spend years struggling with that relationship even though we're not in it. We're still going to struggle with it. And so the goal is to not be in it physically and not be in it emotionally. That's what I wanted to share in these videos. And uh, this video, uh, I wanted to talk about going, uh, about doing self-care after you have chosen to go no contact. So you've already chosen to do it, you're already in it, you're already not having contact with the family members or family member that, that you've targeted who has been the target of your abuse uh, or the one who's been an abuser. Um, and so now you've decided to go no contact. Uh, you know, and how do we and when do we do the self-care? And what do we do that's self-caring for us? And I wanted to share a number of uh, tips on that. First of all, we definitely want to work to resolve our internal relationship with the target of our no contact whether that be the narcissist, the borderline person, the abusive friend, the um, hateful and manipulative ex. Um, and so we want to work on our attachment to them, emotional attachment, and often our enmeshment with them. Because when abuse is involved and when there's this toxic kind of relationships, just like we, you've heard the term uh, trauma bonding, Toxicity and negativity tends to bond us to other people and to other emotional and relationship systems. We want to uh, release and let go of that bonding and let go of that enmeshment, that attachment, that trauma bonding, all that kind of emotional unhealthy connectedness. And to work to get them out of us. We've physically gotten them out of our lives. Now we have to work and want to work to get them out of us. We can do journaling, letter writing, therapy, meditation, crying, uh, facing our feelings, 
accepting our feelings, which is very important, uh, and accepting our feelings about them. Um, those feelings have been there for years for most of us. And in accepting our feelings, we also accept the lost dreams we had about those relationships, the lost fantasies that we had about those relationships, that we were going to have this wonderful family. I just talked to clients today. This, the, I'm going to make this family be what I've always wanted them to be. You know, and she was having difficulty doing that today. And she was coming to realize, you know, it's really not working for me to make uh, this family be the family I've always wanted. And it's very frustrating for her. And she feels resentful and hurt and sad. And <clears throat> But it's actually her dreams and fantasies that's keeping her pain alive. It, it's, it is more problematic to have a fantasy about somebody or a group of somebodies and work to try to change them and make that happen in terms of the relationship I want, that's more traumatizing, more difficult than just accepting the fact they can't. You know, they're not going to. It's not going to happen. While it may be disappointing and it may be sad, I think it's not as traumatic and difficult as keeping that going to try to make that happen. But it is hard from my own experience, it, and I know it's true, it is hard to let go of fantasies and dreams about relationships and what you hope to have happen. To have the mother and father you've always wanted, to have the sibling relationships you've always wanted, to be close to that cousin who you've always wanted to be close to, and it just never happening. And so we do work on giving up our dreams and our illusions as a part of self-care for going no contact. We really want to give up those illusions because we'll be healthier, happier. Uh, facing reality, though hard, is less hard on you than not facing reality. And, and sometimes it doesn't feel like that, though. It does not feel like that, and I well know that. Secondly, we do want to face and resolve our hurt, our anger, and our fear. <clears throat> and again, we want to accept those feelings of hurt, anger, fear. Even that <clears throat> the hurt and anger about, I'm angry that I have to go no contact. You know, I'm hurt and sad that I have to go no contact. Why do they make me do this? And uh, then we also many times turn those feelings on ourselves in a negative way. That why have I been so stupid to stay in this relationship for so long? And we turn to self-hate and self-rejection uh, and self-criticism once we go no contact, and then we go, well, I should have done this a long time. Why was I dumb for, for taking this this long? And again, it turns back around on us negatively, and we want to avoid that. What we want to say is, I do feel sad, For I'm giving an example, I do feel sad that it would have been great had I done this 10 years earlier. But I can't know what I don't know, Time and the universe moves and functions as it does. And if you're a spiritual religious person, then God has a plan. Uh, and that I could only be ready when I was ready. And I wasn't trying to be belligerent then. I just didn't know what I didn't know. I didn't know I should do this. I thought I should keep trying to work hard to make this relationship work and to keep in it when actually it wasn't and it actually was abusive. So we want to be kind to ourselves when we get to those feelings. Uh, remember during no contact, and you'll hear this in other videos, and this is a part of self-care, remember to remember the bad. Keep on To keep on a solid no contact strategy and path. It's okay to remember the good, the dreams, and the fantasies, which is easy to do, 
But we must remember the bad uh, and remind ourselves of, wait a minute, even though they gave me that nice gift once, um, and that was the nicest thing they had done, um, that that doesn't mean I should be in a relationship with them because they're very toxic, even though they can do a nice thing. Um, I also try to help people uh, with when they have gone no contact as a part of self-care. It's like a toddler whose parents has dro have dropped them off at a house for, to babysit them. The parents leave and the toddler, of course, gets very upset, angry, crying, hurt. You know, life is over you know, for the toddler, at least the way they, and I remember those experiences when uh, my son was growing up, and Susan and I would babysit for other people, and other people would babysit for us, and when they bring their kids over, it would be, oh, when they left, it was like we knew it was going to be a mess, and so the, I, I remember Tommy was one that he was just very young, and his parents had left, and he was very upset, went to our bay, we had a bay window in a living room, and went over to the bay window and you could see out to see the cars, and uh, and he would then do the pining, and the pining away for, as they drove off, he then pines for them, yearns for them, and that's what a toddler will do. Well, we as adults do that too, and I'll come back to that. So there's a pining, um, kind of uh, experience and um, and so he's crying he's hysterical he's upset uh, and all of that and um, then we go okay well when is he going to calm down and it's probably not helpful to discipline them to be mean to them and I see some parents doing that it's not going to be helpful to do that and probably would be more damaging they're just pining away because they don't have object permanence in other words when their parents are there their parents are alive when the parents leave the parents are dead so they don't have object permanence. They don't go, oh, well, they'll be coming back. You know, we know they'll be coming back, and we know they're not dead. We know they're going to show up again. The toddler doesn't. The toddler goes, they're gone forever. This is no object permanence. They're, they're erased. And then there's this panic. And then we have a task as a toddler. Can we turn that pining and turn to find the red truck. And then we shift our attention over to the red truck and we feel better. The red truck is now has our interests and we're having fun with the red truck truck, and we forget the pining away uh, experience. And that we must learn as toddlers. That's a very important developmental, emotional developmental task that Eric Erickson talks about where we can shift that pining to soothing ourselves. And same with going no contact. If you have lost some family member or lost some part of your uh, relationship system due to no contact, we want to work going from pining for them to what red truck do we turn ourselves towards? We need the red truck uh, and we need the other focus. And that's not denial. That's being able to soothe myself and shifting to how can I take care of myself. Um, and But we will pine, particularly if we've you know, given up some family members or a family member, then again, they've always been there for since we were babies. You know, and they've always been around. And to not have them around, we, will, we may tend to pine for them because there's a very strong attachment and enmeshment often, often. In addition to that process, we, we want to work hard on our inner bonding because if we've lost them, we want to bond with ourselves. And we work hard on inner bonding and learning to love ourselves, our inner child, our inner adult. We want to get to know them. Uh, and Margaret Paul's books, Dr. Margaret Paul's books are great. 
Inner Bonding and Healing Your Aloneness are two books I recommend because it is a way to focus on you and you can become the red truck. And and that's what I, I think that's the point I wanted to make is that if we're pining, we can turn to ourselves to be the red truck and the focus of taking on the work of loving us, knowing us, and caring about us. And that can take us away from the focus of, but what about them? What about those parents I don't talk to? What about that sibling I don't talk to because they're so toxic and they're so narcissistic and mean? Um, no, another part of self-care for going no contact would be practicing self uh, power, uh, self retention, um, power, self power retention. We're going to retain our power and not give it away. We have learned to give away our emotional and mental power to others. We want to identify and resist giving away our power. We want to stop giving into what others think, what others believe, what others judge to be true. Um, and we want to give up doing for others just to control them out of fear. We want to increase our tolerance for other people's feeling, their own feelings, and believing their own beliefs, no matter how irrational. I remember when I worked in the psychiatric practice uh, and I would work with schizophrenic patients and it is it is easy to get caught up in wanting to change the psychosis you know and feeling triggered by them being irrational and so I needed to increase my acceptance and tolerance of craziness so that I could actually help them so I needed to increase that. Well, that's what we want to do uh, when we're uh, going no contact. We're increasing our ability. I can let you be crazy. I can let you um, be as irrational as you want to be. And that doesn't have to affect or change me. And I work with clients to strengthen this important personal process. I think sixthly, uh, choose and keep close to a support anchor person. A part of self-care is, I think, uh, choosing the red truck of yourself and then choosing the red truck of support or an anchor person, focusing on your own self-care. There are anchor support groups, ACOA, CODA, Codependent Anonymous, um, uh, Al-Anon, uh, there are even some adult children of narcissist groups in different parts of the country, though I think they're more rare. Um, and so we can uh, use that as a part of our support. Getting a sponsor in 12 steps can be a part of the support as well. Having a coach, a therapist, a mature best friend, a mature pastor or a mom, uh, people that will be supportive of you while you go through this process. Uh, seven, remember that self-care during going no contact, the goal is to work towards emotional neutrality. Growing ourselves up, like the books by Jenny Brown called Growing Yourself Up, declaring self and learning to be yourself and to differentiate Harriet Lerner has good books on um, like The Dance of Anger, The Dance of Intimacy. Uh, she, all of her books are based on a family systems approach. And then, of course, doing that work of self-differentiation is so important during, I think, a no-contact uh, work. Uh, and there's Andrea Shera, Roberta Gilbert, and there's some other folks that, and I have resources. If you want to send me an email, I'll send you a list of all those books. Feel free to send me your email. I'll put you on my email list and I'll send you all the resources. Uh, I've got a bibliography of a whole bunch of readings you can do that are on family systems uh, so that you can learn to self-differentiate. 
which means I can stay connected while being myself. And I wanna do that work. With the toxic narcissist, I want to be myself while not staying connected because it's too toxic to stay connected in that regard. But I can, there's even some, I can even talk more about that. I'll do that in another video. Uh, but I like, I'll just leave it at that point. Uh, eighth, remember going no contact is not running away from your family. If you go no contact with family members, it's not running away from them. Running away is done by the wounded inner child and the frightened, paralyzed inner adult. No contact is done by the loved inner child and the loved inner adult. And it is a move of self-differentiation, not a move of immature emotional cutoff. Murray Bowen, who's a theorist that I admire greatly, stated in his Family Systems uh, Therapy classic, he says, the person who runs away from his or her family of origin is as emotionally dependent as the one who never leaves home. They both need emotional closeness, but they are allergic to it. And in general, what I just said is true. That's why we don't want to go no contact as a running away. We want to go no contact as an adult choice uh, in a relationship. We're not running, we're choosing. Again, running is not choosing. Running is reactivity. Well, let me talk ninth about uh, the benefits of going no contact with a narcissistic family or family members. And this article, I love it. It's by Sherry, S-H-A-R-I-E, Dr. Sherry Stein, S-T-I-N-E-S. -E and uh, I really like a part of self-care in going no contact is truly celebrating and enjoying the benefits of going no contact. One of them, as she describes, is freedom. We first have freedom. Um, and that we now realize uh, we can maybe be ourselves without someone you know, constantly causing you to feel guilty, hurt, ashamed, you have some liberation and you have some freedom. And that's one of the benefits. Secondly, peace. As many of you have found in going no contact, you don't have to argue all the time. You don't have to put yourself in constant drama uh, regarding... Um, a narcissistic or malignant uh, family member that just is so painful. It's time consuming and emotionally dra uh, draining. You don't have to feel confused or defensive with every human encounter. Um, and we're, we believe that we're finished living in the house of pain. And I believe that self-care acknowledges that I'm not going to live in the house of pain. Um, and here's another benefit which I really like. Everything is as it seems. There's no more cognitive dissonance. You're no longer being gaslit, lied to, manipulated. You no longer live in a state of mind that's just always in question. Uh, you get up in the morning, have your day, go to bed at night, and there's no hidden agendas, constant implications of your ineptitude. Everything just is. Your relationships are as they seem. You know, whereas with the narcissist, they're not as they seem. And it's always a fog of in the relationship. Another benefit is having yourself. You get yourself back. 
to be yourself, to learn who you are, and to hold on to yourself. And you no longer have to give yourself away all the time. Uh, your intuition. You can actually pay attention to your intuition and value what it says to you. Uh, red flags are no longer ignored. Um, and uh, they're no longer excused or rationalized away. Um, and if someone tries to challenge your reality, you're not swayed. Another benefit is having healthy relationships. Um, our relationship with the narcissist was toxic. Uh, and now you want nothing to do with toxic people or anything that resembles unhealthy relationships. And you realize you don't have to. You can be in relationship with people who are healthy, happy, care about you, have empathy, have concern for you. And, and then we're able to begin to connect with others on a real level uh, that's effortless in many ways. And then I know many people realize the benefit of no longer walking on eggshells. We're no longer walking on eggshells, worrying about our every comment, our every phone call, our every text, our every email, our every how often do we talk to them, how often do we not talk to them. If I email them this or text them this, will they think that? Will they get upset? Will they be upset? Because we never know what they're going to be or how they're going to feel. And it's nice to not have to walk on those eggshells because we don't want to be in relationships in, much, in which we always must worry about the outcome of the encounter. I don't want to have friends that I don't know how this encounter is going to work out. And all we're doing is going out to eat. You know, I don't want to, have, I don't want to always have to worry about what the outcome is going to be. And it's nice to have the relationship. And even if I'm insensitive or mess up, I don't want to worry about the outcome. They may say, well, Jerry, I didn't think that was very kind. And then you can say, you know, I wasn't. And I'm very sorry. I wish I hadn't done that. Um, you're right. It's okay. But they don't freak out, reject you, call you names, are abusive, and, and tell everybody in the world how evil you are. Um and no more navigating emotional landmines. That's another, you know, remember those days of wondering, what will he or she do or think if I dot, dot, dot. Well, you have disentangled yourself from the topography containing these landmines by going no contact. You walk in a different neighborhood now, one that does not contain booby traps everywhere. We also can celebrate, and in the self-care, we celebrate the benefit of having fewer or having somatic symptoms disappear. The, these are these physical symptoms that we've experienced. Migraine headaches, stomachs uh, in knots, eczema, uh, shingles, mysterious ailments, and the like. All are examples of how difficult emotions and stress were being expressed physically. We find that depression is lifted. You know, after years of narcissistic abuse, you've lost yourself, dissociated from emotions, uh, and have conditioned, have been conditioned to a state of learned helplessness. And then we go into that deep depression. And when we go no contact, we can enjoy and begin to enjoy that that depression begins to lift for us. And then we enjoy the drama-free interactions, which I've already mentioned, how it's just not drama and turmoil and crisis and, and you know, worrying about this and worrying about that all the time. And then lastly is emp empowerment. Uh, once you realize you're free from the opinions and manipulations of the narcissist, you find inner strength and capacity for self-agency and self-advocacy. You've learned and begin to learn to set boundaries and have gotten yourself free from the narcissist's web. 
uh, this experience has taught you self-trust and personal empowerment. What I found that people believe they're not able to set boundaries and they're fearful that they can't do it, but they're doing it with a uh, very... They're doing it with malignant narcissists and narcissists, and then they wonder why they can't set boundaries. Well, because you're trying to set boundaries with people who don't accept boundaries at all. So it's not your ability to set boundaries. It's not, um, you know, it's not your skill of setting boundaries. It is who you're trying to set boundaries with are people who don't accept nor set nor receive boundaries at all, nor do they value them. They just want you to do what they want you to do and to be. I hope that you will get an anchor person for your process and for your work. I'd like you to join my YouTube channel. You can find me at www.jerrywiserelationshipsystems.com. I've just, we've just worked on and developed a brand new website that's going to go up soon. Uh, you can write me and I'll send you resources. Uh, I certainly want to thank you for joining me today and I hope this uh, video has been a help to you in your process and choice about going no contact. And um, it has been a pleasure sharing these things with you. I have more videos to come. I've got a master class that's coming up. And it's going to be posted on my website. And if you'd like to uh, participate with us, uh, please feel free. If you would like to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, you can contact me and we can work that out. Again, thanks for watching. And I hope you have a great day.